Hi, welcome to another episode of the Mike Page Doodle Club. I'm Mike Page, and today we're going to pick up where we left off on our portrait of Kurt Russell. Uh, here's the finished thing that we're working toward. Uh, so join in, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I certainly made plenty on, in the process, and you just gotta uh, roll with the punches and figure out how to get where you want to end up. All right, so we're getting there on our portrait. Um, today we're going to fill in the shading on the cheeks, do a little shading in the forehead area, um, and try to get all the hair blocked in. Um, I haven't been using an eraser on this so that you can see all of my mistakes, um, but because of that I kind of want to smudge out some of these reference lines that I had made in, the, in previous episodes. So we're going to start by making a few smudges to clear things out. Some people like to use um, a paper tortillion. It's, it's basically a rolled up piece of paper. You can make them yourself. You don't have to go to an art store. You can literally take a small rectangle of paper and roll it at an angle um, so that you end up with a, a tube of paper um, with a slight point on it and you can use, you can use that instead. Um, but I personally I recommend as much shading as you can do with the pencil and just holding it different ways, um, pulling it, pushing it, you know, different ways. Uh, you can get the same effects that you can get with your with your finger or a paper tortillion. Um, so as much as you can do um, on your own, the better. Uh, so I'm going to start adding a little bit of shadow on his eyelids. To give them a little bit of depth and weight to them. And then I'm lightly going to start marking in sort of a, a cheekbone area. So Kurt Russell's cheeks kind of almost look like they're sagging low. He's got a kind of rounded, rounded face. So we'll start really light like that. Um, and then as you get out here to laugh lines or crow's feet, um, everybody's eyes are a little bit different. Uh, for Kurt Russell, we're just going to make real, uh, just one or two real thin lines right here. So for this, I'm using like the very tip of the pencil. And then we'll start shading in the eye socket area around. And I apologize, I have a hard time um, telling you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. The, when you're drawing, you're using the right side of your brain and to talk, it uses the left side of your brain. So it's, I kind of have to be focused on one thing or the other. Um, it's, it's why if you go into an art room where people are really making great stuff, it's usually very quiet. They might have music playing, but there's not a whole lot of talking going on in an art room where people are doing great work. That's also why um, if you have somebody in your family that likes to draw, if you ever try to get their attention on their drawing, sometimes it's like you're really transported to another place when you're drawing. Um, and sometimes you don't even hear your own name. Uh, it's just the way it is. It's, you're, you're using the other side of your brain and you're not on the communication side. Um, not sure how well this shading is showing up on your screen, but I'm kind of hesitant to go too much darker.
And I think within the beard and mustache, I'm just going to add a couple spots that are a little bit darker to add more contrast to the overall piece so it doesn't start getting washed out. When I was in high school, I had a really hard time. Um, I would work on, on portraits for hours, and I would have a really, I, they'd, I'd be happy with them at the end, but then I would take them into my art teacher, and she would always say, why did you draw this so light? You spent all this time on it, and I can barely see it. And it was really just a, I think I was too intimidated by the idea of really committing to it. Um, so I would, I would encourage you to go ahead and, as you're doing it, if you think it's pretty much right, go ahead and really fill it in and make it dark. Um, especially the, uh, the pupil of the eye, this line right here, the, you know, the eyelashes and the shadow on the eye, those will always be very dark. Um, sometimes this line in the middle of the lips is very dark. Uh, the nostrils can be very dark. Um, and then depending on the, the hair color, the hair may or may not be very dark. Um, so as I'm doing the hair, I kind of want to make sure that I have the hairline right. I think it's more or less right. Some of these hairs here, it's kind of in a pompadour. So some of this is actually going to kind of do that. I'm, I'm going to sort of block in loosely what the hair is doing. Um, so if you're following along to do this at home, you kind of have a pattern to go off of. Um, I had mentioned earlier with eyebrows and the beard and the mustache that you kind of want to go the direction that the hair is growing, um, especially when you're drawing someone who has wild hair like this, makes a huge difference if you're being mindful of the direction that it grows. If I was trying to just shade this in side, side to side like this, it's going to look wrong because the hair is actually going that direction. Um, and it's not going to fool your eye at all. You would look at it and say, Mike, that's terrible. And the hair is going to continue down here. Um, and I still haven't made his ear. So I should probably block that in real quick as well. Uh, this one barely shows. And again, the, and when you draw an ear, it's going to be from the uh, side of the eye and to the bottom of the nose, that's as big as an ear is. Um, and m most of the ear is covered in this case by the beard and the hair. So I'm not going to have a whole lot to do on that ear. And this ear, there's even less showing. We just barely have a little wedge of an ear there. That's going to be kind of a, a clump of hair coming together right here. And we got more here, and then this part is coming down more. And same over here, this kind of swings out, and then this will be coming down more. This, this area over here is going to be very hard to draw just because of the angle that I'm kind of reaching at um, and drawing vertically on an easel, so it's it's going to be a little awkward to do what I want to do over there. And I think I'll go ahead and draw in his, he's got like a scarf around his neck.
And so, you know, drawing fabric is going to be different than drawing hair, different than drawing an eye. Uh, and how you're holding the pencil can sometimes be the only thing that you're doing different to determine whether it looks like fabric or skin or some, you know, some other material. Um, so for this part, I, I just have the side of the uh, pencil down against the paper. Uh, and then he has like another scarf under this scarf. And we'll just want to make sure that the, like this, Part, I put a little too low. I want this line way up here. And this will be the back side of the scarf. There'll be a little bit of hair on the back of his head down here. All right, so now uh, we just go in and start filling in all of these areas. Um, you, you might remember with the beard and mustache I mentioned, so we're drawing the direction that the hair is going. Uh, but Every now and then I'm going to make a reflection, and to do that, uh, so rather than bringing the pencil all the way around, I'm bringing it part way, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the pencil back down the other way, and if I kick the pencil out at just the right angle, your brain should see that as a reflection of light in the hair doesn't always work. It definitely takes some practice to, to um, learn how to kick the pencil out at the angle that you're hoping to do it. Uh, sometimes it works better than other times, but the more you practice it, the easier it'll get. Uh, but that way it'll give the hair a nice shine, um, especially when, when I'm doing portraits of women, the more uh, reflections their hair gets, the, the more sort of glamorous it looks and it um, adds, an, adds a nice detail. Especially if you're drawing a, a woman that you know, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> you give them a few extra, extra reflections in their hair, they'll thank you for it. Creates a look of really healthy, shiny hair. And so all of this, I just want to make sure that the hair is going the right direction so that it's going to look like hair. Um, that's really the only thing you need to know when you're drawing hair. When, when hair is drawn the wrong way, it's, it's usually just that the lines aren't matching up. They're not, they're not heading the right direction. Um, where the hair all kind of comes together here in sort of a, a clump and this whole thing is acting as one unit almost of hair, uh, you want to show that at the top, that this is all, this is all kind of together. So if I have individual hairs sticking out and they're going every which way, it's not, it's not going to read correctly.
And this is the part where you just kind of lull yourself into <laughs> the right side of the brain. And sometimes you kind of get lost for a while because you're just doing the same movement over and over. Um, if I completely stop explaining what I'm doing, I apologize, although you might thank me for it, I don't know. And in previous episodes, I've done um, some gesture drawings and, and contour drawings and continuous continuous contour drawings. Uh, this is something like this is the kind of project if you're doing a if you want to get into portraits, um, doing a quick sketch or a gesture drawing or a continuous contour drawing is a great way to um, do a faster sort of practice one. Um, and then it'll usually help you discover what what the problem area is likely to be. Um, so if I did a five minute sketch of Kurt Russell and I look at it and I say, boy, the mouth is completely wrong and I did this wrong and the hair is not right. That way I would know going into a longer drawing that that's the stuff to look out for. Um, I did not do that prior to starting this sketch and to be honest, I kind of wish that I had um, because I've already done a number of things where as soon as I do it, I say, that's not quite what I wanted. Uh, but again, the, to me, half the fun of drawing is that every time I sit down, it's never quite what I want. Um, but I like the challenge of, of working with what I've already made and then trying to redeem it as much as I can and still get something that I'm happy with at the end. Um, and honestly, one, one thing that I've learned over the years is if, if you don't point out your mistakes, a lot of times someone else won't, won't notice what's wrong with it. Um, but the second you point out to them what is wrong, they will zero in on it and you, you can't unsee it. One of the, once you know that it's there, you'll, you'll always see it. So don't point out to people the things that you did wrong. Um, and there's other fun things that you can do as you're doing mindless stuff like this. Sometimes I'll hide someone's name in the hair or something. Um, if you have a portrait that I've done in your house, uh, there might be a name hiding in the bushes or in the hair. Uh, but I, it's something that if you're doing a portrait for somebody, it's kind of fun to hide something in there and see if they ever notice it or not. Usually people don't find it. I guess it depends how obvious you make it, but. So again, this, this part gets pretty mindless here. You're just kind of making line after line after line. Um, although now that I'm getting to this bottom area, this is a very awkward angle for my wrist. Um, but I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera as much as possible. So kind of trying to work with it, but um, as, as mindless as the marks are when you're in an awkward position, you're kind of aware of what you're doing, I guess. And I had, I had mentioned, um, I think when I was working on the beard, I had mentioned that I'm starting to see my friend Kevin in this portrait more than Kurt Russell. Um, 
And that's largely, I think, because I, Kurt Russell's face would be a, a substantially more circular. I have stretched it out a bit more. Uh, my friend Kevin's face is much more stretched out. Um, for a proper Kurt Russell, the bottom of the beard really probably should have been up about here. Um, and the hairline probably should have been way down about here. Um, and I can try to fix that. I could try to move this hairline down. We'll see if it's too late. I just switched to a sharper pencil. Hopefully that'll help a bit. So now I'm going to block all this in again. See if I can kind of salvage it. If I had been working with a pencil uh, with an eraser from the start, it would have been a different story. But again, I, to me, that's kind of the half the fun is making the mistakes and then working it out as you go. And an eraser is too easy of a solution. I've always been difficult. You can ask my mom. And so I'm working a little bit faster now, trying to fill some of this in. Yeah, so already that's starting to make a huge difference in the in the overall. So again, that's one of those things that a, a quick um, continuous contour or contour drawing of the same picture before I started, like just a quick five minute drawing, I probably would have made that exact same mistake, um, but I would have caught it and I would have said, oh, okay, I need to make sure that I uh, keep his hairline nice and low because otherwise it looks like my friend Kevin. Which again, he would be thrilled to hear that because he is a huge fan of Kurt Russell. And I'm starting to suspect that his whole look might be based off of <laughs> Kurt Russell. And I know a lot of people are intimidated to try to get good at drawing or, or painting or, any, you know, whatever artistic thing because, you know, the common misconception is that you need fancy, fancy stuff to get into it, and you really don't. This, this sketch pad is a very cheap sketch pad. Um, it's not a fancy one or anything. Um, these pencils I really like. Uh, but, you know, you can use any old number two pencil is fine. Um, those mechanical pencils are fine. Whatever you have, start, start making marks and see what, see what happens. Don't, don't be afraid to try something out because you don't have stuff that's as nice as somebody else. Because um, one, one way that you won't improve is always worrying about what somebody else is doing. You can, if you've got a box of crayons at home, you can draw with crayons, you could draw with pencil, pen, anything. But I would, I would say that trying it and creating something is, is better than not trying it.
Um, and again, I had mentioned earlier that you want to draw hair the direction that it grows. The, the one time that that's not necessarily true, and you might have just seen me do it, is from this top area, I'm coming down into the hair. Uh, and then here, I'm drawing it the direction that it grows. And I might add another little reflection here. So to do that, I'm just kind of coming both directions and you, you want the lines to meet up so that they're tricking your eye into seeing a reflection there. I might jump down here and fill this chunk in real quick because I think this, this area is going to go faster. I can just kind of use the side of the pencil here. And if you're watching me do this, I also enjoy, um, I love watching other people draw um, because to me it's very helpful to see how somebody else approaches doing the same thing that, that I like to do. Um, I'm always learning new things. Um, like Instagram is a great place uh, to find. That there's a, there are a couple tattoo artists that I follow that will post live videos of them sketching. Um, Ray Villafane does pumpkin carvings and he'll do live pumpkin carvings and uh, butternut squash carvings and stuff. And even like, so I enjoy uh, carving as well, but even for the drawing aspect, um, sometimes watching Ray Villafane, I will learn a new trick of something to try in a drawing based on what I see him doing um, as a carving. Uh, so, so just like anything, the more um, the more resources you have um, to watch, the the more you'll learn. Um, and you, if you're just getting started, you can really pick things up very quickly if you're listening to a number of sources and trying out different techniques. And you you might see the way I do it, and you might say, I I don't like that order that you're doing things at all and I don't I don't like the way you kick your pencil that's fine uh, there's more than one, more than one way to do it um, and again to me it's really helpful seeing uh, all different ways and approaches of doing things because I'm constantly learning from from how other people are approaching something um, I didn't know how to draw a sailboat until I was what was I 22 I think I went to a um, boat show up in Salem, Massachusetts, and there was a guy sitting there doing watercolors of, of the boats in the harbor, and he was knocking them out so fast, and I was blown away by how well he could draw boats. And I, I asked him, I said, but what's your secret to this? Because I, I love drawing, and I, boats have always escaped me. Um, and I believe I've already done an episode on boats, so I won't, I won't get too far into that, but I'm pretty sure I've already done an episode of the Doodle Club on boats. So you can check that out if you're interested. If I haven't already done an episode, I'll be sure to do one soon. Um, but when he showed me how he draws boats, it blew my mind of how simple it was because of his approach. Um, and if I had kept trying to do it my own way, they would have continued to disappoint me. Um, and that's another thing. Don't, don't hesitate to ask. If you see somebody that has, has a skill that you are hoping to pick up, ask them how they're doing it. Um, most people love sharing their tricks. Um, not everybody, but... A lot of people are more than happy to um, show you the, uh, a couple pointers and techniques.
or even if they just tell you a, uh, you know, somebody that really inspired them or shaped how they how they do things. Um, like I really love N.C. Wyeth and Andrew Wyeth and Jamie Wyeth. The whole Wyeth family was incredibly talented, um, and I I grew up with. Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island book. And when I found out as I got older that there were versions that weren't illustrated by N.C. Wyeth, I was appalled. Uh, to me, if it's not illustrated by N.C. Wyeth, it's not Treasure Island. Um, but so I've always been kind of influenced by his, you know, he has a more uh, slightly stylized approach, but it was always realistic. Um, his son, Andrew Wyeth, is very, very uh, hyper-realistic. Uh, sometimes even just if, if uh, you know, if you have a friend that's really good, ask them who, who they really enjoy and look into those people. Uh, because sometimes you can learn a lot from just from kind of researching those those artists and how they approach different things and I mean Andrew Wyeth would do watercolor paintings and then just attack the the paper that he did it on to get to get raw whites in the in the middle of the snow and stuff, he'd, he'd actually attack the paper and scratch it up. Um, and that's one of those things, if you're not willing to commit and just give it a shot, you'd never, you know, who, who's going to, um, to think that the best way to improve their watercolor painting of snow is going to be by <laughs> tearing into the paper and really scratching away at it. I mean, that's, that's one of those things, until you know that that works, you, it's, it's counterintuitive. Until somebody gives you that trick, you're unlikely to try it yourself, I think. I know I'm talking a lot, but we got a lot of hair to fill here, and, you know, what do you want from me? All right. This area, uh, I'm going to make kind of one more area that hooks over. This. Sorry, I feel like I'm probably blocking the camera a bit. I apologize if I am. Now, right now I have kind of too many reflections, so some of these uh, reflections I'm actually going to come in and lightly shade here, uh, because not every reflection on hair is going to be totally white like that. So now we'll lightly shade over that. Should make it a little bit less uh, pronounced. Uh, it's also worth noting, um, if you're checking out other artists and how they do stuff, uh, if, you're, if you're lucky enough to find somebody that's doing like live videos on Instagram and stuff, pay attention to how they hold their pencil. Um, especially if they're, if they're doing something where you go, oh, that, that line that they just did looks perfect. Um, you know, you really like the weight of the line and stuff. Are they really pressing down on the pencil? Are they holding it? right here, are they holding it way back here? You know, pay attention to all that stuff. Are they using the side of the lead um, or the tip of the lead? That's the kind of stuff that if you're making mental notes of that while you're watching somebody else work, it can really help you out um, 
moving forward trying to copy some of those techniques in your own work. And, and for that matter, when you see something that you don't care for, you know, pay attention to that too. Oh, they, you know, he's, he's drawing hair and he's making the strokes in the direction that the hair should be going. If, if you saw somebody drawing, filling in the hair, just going side to side like this, I guarantee you, you're going to say, well, I don't like that. That, that doesn't look right. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that it's, it's worth paying attention to. Um, one other thing you might pay attention to is the order that they're doing things. Um, so I had done the episode with the beard before I did this hair on top. And as a result, I've since kind of smudged a bunch of the face. Um, and I'm not sure whether you can see that or not. Uh, but I, cer I certainly can. Um, and I, you know, I didn't really worry too much about what order I was doing this in. My, my main concern was getting the eyes in first. Um, but that's another thing. I mean, pay attention to the order that somebody works in because uh, I've mentioned before that if you're right-handed, it helps to do stuff on the left first and work this way so you're not smudging and so that you can see like, here's the stuff on the left, and I'm right-handed. I can see that as I'm working. If you're left-handed, it would be the opposite. You'd want to do this first and come over here. Um, and if you're watching someone else work, sometimes you can save yourself the hassle of having to learn it the hard way. Um, so if I just helped you learn, boy, don't be like Mike and do the beard before the hair, uh, good, I'm glad I could help you out there. Normally I would not want to do the beard before the hair. And this part of the hair is pretty much all in shadow, but I'm still trying to add some lines to it. Uh, to give it a little bit of flow still, so it's not just a chunk of hair. Uh, I am going to come back into the beard and just add a little bit of line work in here again to separate out the beard a little bit more. And again, in actuality, his, his beard is very um, salt and peppery. Uh, so you'd really want it pretty light, but um, in the interest of having everything show up, I'm making it a little darker than I would. Um, and then I want to come back in and just double check some of these values of shading here because some of it got smudged a little too much as I worked on the hair. And as you're as you're drawing faces, the the more you can do with shading rather than actual line work, the better. Um, so I had mentioned earlier that, uh, like with the mouth, for example, the lower lip, you don't really want to draw the whole thing. You kind of want to imply it by shading rather than draw a line saying, this is the bottom of the lip. Um, as soon as you draw a, a line, uh, you'll want to erase it because you'll say those don't look like lips. Um, and I think it's one of the reasons that a lot of people get frustrated trying to draw portraits. Um, but I mean, it's, it's fixable. You just 
kind of shade your way into what you want instead of saying, and here's a line where the mouth ends. Um, it's just like anything else. You kind of learn it by doing it, and you find what works for you and what doesn't work. Um, I mean, this certainly isn't my best portrait that I've done today, but I've had fun doing it, so <laughs> that's good enough for me. Um, and really, I mean, the, one of the nice things about drawing is that when you're done, you have, you have something to show for what you've been up to. Uh, it's just like if you read a history book, then you, you know, you come out with some interesting facts and stuff, or, you know, if you love playing soccer, you might have learned a new trick to juggle the ball or something. But I've, I've always liked that if you sit down and draw for a while when you're, when you're done, you have something to show for what, what you, how you spent your time. Um, and it, you know, if you sit down and, and draw an hour a day for a month, at the end of the month, you'll have a lot to show for what you've done with your time because you'll realize how much better you are than you were at the beginning of the month. All right, so I'm just about done with what I'm going to do on this. And I'll add a little bit of shading on the neck here. I'm not going to worry about shading in the scarf and all that fabric, but... Oh, and then... Last, I forgot some wrinkles on the forehead. Uh, usually when I do wrinkles, I will start at the middle and work my way out. And you, you'll you want to differentiate the line weight a little bit as you go. So here I'm kind of tapering it out and it's a little bit thicker right there. And then it's tapering out again. And Brow wrinkles are definitely something where less is more. You don't want to overdo it. It's very easy to overdo wrinkles. Um, for example, these are a little darker than they really should have been. Um, I was worried too much about making sure that they would show up for you on camera, but um, I wouldn't really want them that dark. It creates too much... Uh, weight in that line. Uh, and last, I'm just kind of coming around, finishing touches on anything that may have been smudged out and touching up some of the shading details. Plenty of mis mistakes in this one, but I had fun doing it. And I hope you learned some of the techniques that might work for you and and again you might have seen some things where you say boy I don't like the way he does that and uh, sometimes it's every bit as beneficial learning what what you don't want to do um, because what works for me doesn't work for everybody and what works for some really incredible famous artists doesn't always work for me uh, everybody approaches things differently
And it's also, especially if you're working vertically, I, I kind of forgot a couple times that, you know, you start getting into awkward angles as you're doing things, especially over in this area. Um, I'm not used to working vertically, um, but one thing, no matter uh, whether you're drawing vertically or horizontally, um, if the head is tilted slightly, like, so this head is at a slight angle, you want to remember that like eyes will be at this angle, the nose will be at that angle, everything wants to go perpendicular to that line. So if you start off with the head tilted, a very common mistake is that as you go in and start adding the details, everything gradually turns um, back upright. Uh, so that's something to be mindful of. And pretty much everybody is guilty of it. Doesn't matter how much I've practiced, every now and then I'll work on a portrait and halfway through it I go, ah, man. All right, so I think we'll call it a day there. So here is our finished portrait of Kurt Russell. Uh, there were certainly some bumps along the way, uh, a few proportion issues that I had to work out. Um, and I didn't use an eraser so that any of the mistakes were like, you just have to figure it out because you know, you working at home, it's the same thing. You're going to, you're going to mess up. You have to figure out, do I erase this? Can I still work with it? Um, originally I had the hairline probably half an inch, three quarters of an inch too high. And as I went, I realized that's not right. And I, I was, mostly able to cover it up and, and fix it. Um, but I'm sure if you were following along, I guarantee you, you ran into similar things and you, oh, okay, I, I can kind of figure out how to, how to work with this. Um, but honestly, I think that when you are making mistakes as you draw, that's where you're gonna learn the most stuff. Um, and I, I mentioned in the episode where uh, we were finishing up the hair, uh, check out other artists, watch if you can uh, watch live streams on Instagram or anything like that, check out how other people are doing it because you'll learn so much just by watching someone else's process and how they're holding their pencil or their paintbrush or whatever, uh, the, the way they're moving it. Uh, you can learn a lot by watching someone else's technique. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed following along. This was a four or five episode series. Uh, so this took you all month to complete and I hope you're really proud of what you created. Thanks again and tune in for another episode next time of the Mike Page Doodle Club.